This is Electric Universe Eyes, and today I'm going to narrate The Great Comet Venus by David Talbot, 1997. Section titled, Conclusion. In this first installment of an extended series, we have asked whether Emmanuel Velikovsky's comet Venus is supported by Mesoamerican evidence cross-referenced with more general traditions about comets in other cultures. We find that, to a stunning extent, the acknowledged symbols or hieroglyphs for the comet stand in an unexplained conjunction with the planet Venus in Mesoamerica. Not only the five most frequently occurring hieroglyphs for the comet, but virtually all of the variations on these symbols are attached to each other and to the planet Venus. Additionally, we find that the deepest fears of Mesoamerican culture turn out to be the fears which ancient astronomies consistently associated with the arrival of the comet, the end of the world, death of kings, overwhelming wars, plague, pestilence, drought. What explains these fears is the myth of the ancient god-king, the founder of the kingship rites, whose death brought a former world age to a catastrophic close, and whose soul took flight as a comet-like star, identified enigmatically with the planet Venus. And thus did the stargazers, in their most visible expressions of the culture-wide fear, their calendars of world ages, their responses to unexpected disruptions of natural cycles, eclipses, etc., their ritual sacrifices, their relentless holy wars, and their commemorative festivals and rites, look to Venus as the cause or sign of the very disorder that world myth ascribes to the great comet of primeval times. In the course of this review, I have suggested more than once that an entirely new approach to ancient myth and religion is warranted. Early man's preoccupation with the mythical age of the gods reflect an ancient celestial source for the collective anxiety. But if this is true, then nothing could do more to obstruct meaningful insight than the modern belief that the great civilizations of the past oriented themselves to a sky almost exactly like our sky today. The evidence on behalf of an unfamiliar sky is both massive and compelling, but to appreciate even the first levels of that evidence, one must break free from the trance of prior teaching and beliefs. Only then will evidence be seen as such, rather than as a witness to the absurdity and contradictions of the first star worshippers. Our proposed Great Comet Venus takes us beyond generally acknowledged comet symbolism. It says that, by virtue of its history, Venus eventually shed its cometary tail and settled into a peaceful orbit. The symbolism of the great comet fragmented into two primary streams, one relating to the periodic cometary visitor, the other relating to the planet Venus. Hence, wherever systematic, empirical astronomy kept alive the great comet's connection with Venus, the cometary symbols should pervade the culture's images of the planet. If the thesis is correct, it could not have been otherwise, so we are not surprised to find in Mexico the five universal glyphs of the comet attached to Venus. It should not surprise us either that the planet Venus was, in a hundred different ways, the regulator of the fate of kings and kingdoms in Mexico. The great comet did determine the fates of the king's celestial prototype, the god-king remembered by every ancient civilization as the first in the line of kings. A compelling logic will thus be seen in the role of Venus in regulating the cosmic cycles, ordaining great festivals, commemorating the age of the gods, sending the kingdom's strongest men to war, and sending the victims of war to the sacrificial stone. And even in the tempered rituals of daily life, the keeping of the sacred fire, the morning sweeping of the shrine, and other rites too numerous to mention here, one discerns the ever-present memory of a world falling into confusion, but rising again in the drumbeat of the Dawnbringer. When Bob Forrest said that he could find no direct historical reference to the Venus Comet, I believe he spoke from conviction. But since the language of myth was the language of the first civilizations, every civilization fails Forrest's test. There are no direct historical references to the age of the gods, because that age precedes historical chronicles. Did the events suggested by consistent mythical expression and ritual acts of remembering actually occur? Given the nature of the language involved, the sheer scale of evidence is stunning, and one wonders how the Mexican star worshippers were supposed to have told us something more about the catastrophes without a crash course in the King's English or astronomy lessons from Carl Sagan. 
Thus, the imperative need for cross-referencing when taking up such issues. No approach that isolates each evidential fragment, explaining away that fragment without explaining parallels and converging cometary images, can remove the Venus comet issue. And in this sense, Forrest's analysis breaks down completely with the very first instance cited. My intent in this series is to demonstrate with more than sufficient evidence that the comet Venus is a global myth, and the one credible explanation of the myth is that Venus did look like a comet, that it did participate in literally earth-shaking events not all that long ago. One only has to follow the evidence to know that this is so.